Hi, everybody. I thought that we would take advantage of one of the still warm days that are out. Um, and I wanted you to see how much my fish and my frog have grown because I've gotten to share them with you. So my son Isaiah is going to try to zoom in really quick and uh, so that we can interact with the fish for just a minute. Okay. And believe it or not, it has something to do with today. Isaiah, honey, first of all, if you come down to my level, and if you could turn right there, do you see my little fishies? I've been out here a minute. I mean, my little froggies, I've been out here for a minute, so they already come. Okay, just point right by the water. Now, I know some people think this is stupid, but I love to play with the fish. So let me call them for you. Hi, boys. Come on. Oh, hi, beauties. Hi. Yeah, oh, thank you. That's such good love. Oh, all right. <laughs> I hopefully you got to see how beautiful and how familiar the animals are. They swim in and out of my fingers. They let me pick them up. All right, and take a quick look just at the water. All right, Isaiah, thank you so much. And while he's putting the camera back where it needs to be, I'm going to get out of this awkward position. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, it is the time of season where the animals are starting to sense the chill in the water. And so because of that, they're getting a little bit ready for the winter to start to come. But as of right now, they're still willing to play. I don't know if you noticed, but my fish and I have gotten so familiar that actually when they hear me come out to the pond, they will come, the frogs will come. The other day there was like 16 frogs out here. And I don't know how many fish we have. We have four big, beautiful ones, which hopefully you saw. But the reason I wanted to show you that is because we are going to be talking about water today. Um, it's an odd piece of scripture. The title is odd, but we're going to go with it and see how well we do. So let's open up with prayer. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you that we get to be together. Thank you for the beauty of something so luscious as a pond and fish and birds and flowers and weeds and lilies and frogs and Lord for all of creation. But right now we want to take a minute. We want to thank you for being our shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen. Although it is nice outside, um, it's a little bit humid. So if I have a little bit of issues breathing or talking, just roll right over me. We'll figure it out together. Okay, today's I am statement is a little fuzzy in what it means until we start going through the verses, okay? So as you know, we have been doing this wonderful study. Today is uh, day 95. Can you believe how the time has gone? Um, very little time left out here by the pond, that's for sure. Um, but as you know, we've been taking this beautiful thread throughout the Bible of who God says I am. And we've been studying each of those piece by piece to try to get a better idea of of who he says we are and how critical that is. So today our I am statement is, I am not muddying the water. Okay, I know that sounds silly. I am not muddying the water. I was going to say I am not a water muddier, but I think muddying of water sounds better. Now we're gonna see this beautifully in the book of Ezekiel. And it's going to be hard at first to really see the, the importance of this. So we're going to dig right in and see what, what the Bible is trying to tell us about who we are. So we're going to look right away at Ezekiel 34. And we're going to focus on these verses 17 to 19. And they may not make sense at first, but I want you to really listen and read. So listen and read and see if you can find out what this muddying water is about. 34, 17 of Ezekiel. And as for you, my flock, and the, it's a capital M, so it's God. This is first person God who is talking to us through the mouth of Ezekiel. And in this setting, he's actually talking to the people of Israel. And they have been in captivity for a while. 
and they will continue to be in captivity for a while. And the reason Ezekiel is talking to them is because he's trying to help them understand that when you compromise and follow a different leader or fall under a different shepherd, things can get ugly. But he is also talking not just to the Israelites, but to the leaders of the Israelites. And the leaders that were taken into captivity, their job was to keep reminding, keep telling the stories of God to Israel while they were being captive in another country. And so their job was extremely serious. And the reason they had that job is because of how susceptible the people of Israel were to being lost in pagan religion. They, they didn't hold very tightly to, to, to being a, a, a people of God. And as soon as they had a chance, they seem to be off to the races with some other kind of leader. So the leaders had this huge job. And in this portion, um, God is talking to both of those who's. He's talking to the Israelites who are captive. And he is talking to the leaders, the shepherds of these Israelites, who are also in captivity, whose main job is to, is to continue teaching the people. Okay, so let's start back. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold... I will judge between one sheep and another, between the rams and the male goats. Is it too slight a thing for you that you should feed in the good pasture, that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, or that you should drink of the clear waters, that you must foul the rest with your feet? And as for my flock, they must eat what you tread down with your feet, and they must drink what you foul with your feet. This is sounding like, uh, what? But this is a huge reprimand. And I'm going to share with you what this reprimand is talking about. And we have to go back to the idea of what it means to be a sheep and be a shepherd in order to figure out what this is saying. But God is very, I mean, the, the language in this, God is pretty upset. He's saying, how can you, how can you slight such a simple thing as giving good food and good water to my people. How, how is it that you trample down what they're supposed to eat and you muddy up what they're supposed to drink? You can't even give them food and water? Now that's the very basic of what we need to live. That's the very basic of survival is to eat and drink. So, But it also has a hidden message that's not very hidden. But when Jesus talks in the Bible, in the New Testament, he talks about the living water and about drinking from him. He also talks um, much about eating the word, that it's our nourishment. So there's a double meaning here when we're reading Ezekiel. It's not just food and water, but they're muddying up the truth and they're trampling down the, the, the laws of God. And so God is ticked. And let me explain why he is so angry, okay? We already did a series on sheep, so I know that you already have an understanding of, of, of what's going on. But you see, sheep are dumb, 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 dumb animals. And I don't take offense to that when God calls me a sheep, because in comparison to him, I will admit I am as dumb as a rock, because he knows everything. He knows how things are supposed to be. He knows what we are supposed to be, and when we are supposed to be it, and how we're supposed to be it. So when he calls us a sheep, what he is really saying is, I so badly want to walk as your shepherd so that you don't get yourself in these kind of things that you will drift to or that you will wander to. So I think it's beautiful that he helps us understand that we need him so desperately as a shepherd. Now, we're going to look to a very common scripture. We are going to go to Psalms chapter 23. And we're going to give a little read, not surprisingly. And I want you to pay close, close attention to see what you think about how these two verses are connected or if they are. We're going to look at Psalms 23 and we are going to uh, do verses 1 and 2. Okay. And, and listen and see what, what pops out at you. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want... He makes me lay down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. Now, it'd be hard-pressed to find somebody um, who hadn't heard or referenced Psalms 23. I mean, you see it everywhere. 
And so it's kind of cool because people are walking around and little do they know that they know the basic plan of salvation. Good food and good water. And all of that comes from our Bible and our relationship with Jesus Christ. Good food, good water. Yes, and that makes a sheep fat. Now to say a sheep is fat is not bad. It's not like saying, oh, Jack, you're so chubby. I know I'm chubby. But in this case, in this case, to call a sheep fat, like he does in Ezekiel, is a compliment. It is saying that whoever is taking care of that sheep is doing a good, good job. That somehow they manage to get good water and good food. And in this chapter in Psalms 23, David is declaring who his good shepherd is. He is saying his good shepherd is the Lord. And he is saying that because he recognizes how, how dumb a sheep is, David places himself in that place of being a sheep. And he admits, he says, God has to lead me to a place where I'm going to eat well. And God has to lay me down so that I don't choke when I eat. He's got to put me in the position so that I can feed the best. If any of you ever had um, a, a, a baby, and if you're a mama, if you ever tried to breastfeed, position of where that baby is is everything trying to get that baby to eat. Well, that's kind of what this is about too. The, the sheep need to know that they're safe and they would eat just about anything. I mean literally anything, including poisonous things that would give them stomach irritation. Some of the things that they would eat were deadly and could kill them. So when it says that they would lie, he would make them lie in green pastures, he would take them to the most luscious places and put them in a position so they would be ready to eat. Now, if we correlate this with the word, do you see what's going on here? He's saying, shepherds, you're not feeding your sheep good grass. In fact, you're running over the top of the grass so that not only do they get good grass, but they get trampled down just piece part, broken parts of food. But David paints a different picture. No, no, no. That's not how God does it when he shepherds us. When he shepherds us, he takes us to the beautiful places and allows us to eat there. I'm telling you what, I love when God takes me to a quiet place and he feeds me his word. Some of the best word ever. But you know what? I also love when he takes me to church and he allows that beautiful green pasture there to be able to feed me. I love all the ways that he knows how to make our pastures green. Not trampled on, not full of rocks, not full of poison food. He gives us places where we can eat well. And in Ezekiel, God is saying he expects nothing less from the pastors, the leaders of God's people. He expects them to not tread on the food, to not spoil the food, to not give them only pieces of the food. He's talking about the scripture. There can't be any compromise. He's saying no compromise. Nothing thrown in there that's going to hurt the sheep. Now, we see this big concept of the water. In Psalms 24, excuse me, 23, it said, He leads me beside still waters. Now, that's really important to remember. Now, we're going to go back to Ezekiel, and we're going to see what Ezekiel said. Ezekiel said, and this is crazy, this is where our I am statement comes from. Ezekiel says, Or should you drink, or that you should drink of the clear water, that you must foul the rest of it with your feet? As for my flock, they must eat what you tread down with your feet, and they must drink what you foul with your feet. God is making a very poignant statement. Um, you saw the water here in the pond, and it's getting a little bit later in the, seedy, in the season, so the, the lilies are starting to decay just a bit, and the leaves are starting to decay. So the water is not extremely clear right now. And part of that is... Because when I come and I interact with the fish and we play and uh, crazy stuff, they muddy up the water. But they're supposed to do that because I'm not drinking that water. For a sheep to be led to good water, it means it has to be non-ripply. It can't be a flowing brook. 
um, do a quick search about sheep, or again, go read my favorite book, A Shepherd's Look at the, tw at the 23rd Psalms by uh, Philip Keller. Old, 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 but it's, it really helps you understand what being a sheep is. But when I was in there, you can hear the waterfall. So is that still water? No, it's not still water. Now my dogs can drink on it, but sheep would not. And one of the things that I learned is that sheep kind of need a particular way to drink because um, they drown easy. If water is moving, they don't think enough to lift their nose out of it. So sometimes they'll put both their nose and their water and their mouth in the water as it ripples and they will drown. It's, I mean, when Jesus calls us a sheep, he's calling us a sheep. And that sometimes it's really hard to get our own drink of water because it, it has to be good water. It has to be pure water. And that's one of the things that the shepherds are supposed to help with us, to find that still place. And so Ezekiel is saying, you have good water. You have good water, but you are sticking your feet in it, stomping around in it, and then leading your sheep to it. So that your sheep aren't getting the good water. They're getting all that silt. They're getting all that mud. They're getting all that debris that you stir up from the bottom. I, I know I've told you this before. My husband is a scuba diver and he's very good at it and he loves it. But we haven't gotten to go very many exotic places. And as a diver, you know, that's your wish. So he's been to some cool places, but definitely not a dreamful. Um, maybe we'll see more someday. But one of the things is when he takes divers out, the quarry is usually very, very clear. So as he's giving instruction to the divers underwater, it's, it's good because they can see each other. But during the summer, if there are swimmers in the quarry um, or things like that, or if the, their flippers get too close to the bottom and it, and it uh, flips up all the dirt from the bottom, then there is very little visibility. And that visibility in the water makes or breaks a safety diver. If you cannot see your instructor, and you're down there and you're not a diver and you're being taught to dive, not being able to see clearly kind of makes you feel like, uh-oh, I can't see my teacher. And sometimes it gets that dark in the water just from stirring it up. So I want you to see this picture of what God is telling us. As sheep, he is telling us in Psalms 23, drink my water, drink, eat my food because that's the goodness. That's the purity of my word. And that is the relationship with the living water, Jesus Christ. And in Ezekiel, God directly, he is directly saying, you are not to muddy the water for others. And this is, you know, we've been studying some really good I am's that make us feel wonderful. This is not one of those I am's that make us feel wonderful. In fact, just the opposite. This I am is stating, you better not take this lightly, people of God. When you are relating to other Christians, and if you are leading people to a relationship with God, you can't trample on his word. You can't muddy up the waters. Because a believer in Christ needs to eat, and they need to drink, and they need to eat what is good, and they need to drink what is good. So the challenge today in this I am statement, he is asking us not to be a, a pasture stomper and not to be a water muddier. He is saying, I want you to keep it pure. So let me ask you, what if, what if, like in the book of Ezekiel, you know, you have been given the job to bring up other Christians. Um, you know, in the, in the book of Ezekiel, we know specifically that leaders were put over Israelites to keep it fresh and to keep it real. What if they would have taken their job seriously? You know, what if they wouldn't have muddied up the water or compromised the truth. We won't know. 
obviously events happen just as God needed them to happen. But I want you to think, you know, all of us are called to lead other people. We can't get by the, you know, the reference in, in, in Matthew that says, go and make disciples. That's the whole concept of being a leader to them. You know, it says, be ready to give an account of the gospel. I mean, there's all these little wonderful, truthful sentences in the Bible that explain to us, hey, you are in charge. You're a leader to other people, anybody that sees you. What if we took our job as non-seriously as the leaders that Ezekiel is writing about? Think about that. Are you muddying the water for your children or your grandchildren? Are, are, are you compromising truth or not even bothering to worry about feeding the people that have been put under your care? You know, I'm at a tricky point with my fish right now. Because it's starting to get a little bit chillier, you have to start weaning them off of being fed so that they will go down deep and they will kind of like hibernate where they won't need any food. Um, we put a little heater in so that they don't get the methane gas from you know the decaying leaves and stuff on the bottom but we have to wean them off of their food in order for them to hibernate hibernate that is not what we are asked to do we are not hibernating creatures so if it takes that much thought and effort to not feed a fish how much thought and effort needs to go into feeding each other, feeding the people that God has allowed to be part of our flock. And it's also, you know, as a sheep, are you looking only to the shepherd for your food and water? Or are you drinking down muddy water without even realizing that what being handed to you is not the purity of the living water, Jesus Christ? Are you getting sick? Are you a skinny sheep as a Christian? Because you are not getting enough of the word. Are you not eating from the wonderful banquet table that he prepared for us in this scripture? So I know today's was a little odd. I am not a muddier of water. But God wants us to take this very seriously. Not just about being a sheep in someone else's flock but also being a shepherd in the flocks that God has given us to take care of. Hopefully you'll have a good time in your homework. I'm leaving you a little early to give you a little bit extra time to do uh, a couple research things. Um, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you tomorrow.